It's, uh, oh, what day is it? <laughs> it is August 23rd, 2020. Oops. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. Uh, August 23rd, I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. <laughs> and that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. What if it comes out loud, the bear podcast of indeterminate uh, 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 confusion, episode number 566, only 100 more episodes, still a very terrifying episode number. Dun, dun, dun. That's like two years away. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're fine <laughs> for now. We'll be uh, okay. Did I say September? Did I actually read September or did I say August? All right, all right, all right. So apparently I'm time traveling. My apologies on the documents. So I was laughing because you were like, what day is it? And I was like, read the damn doc. The date's in there. And as soon as I read it, I was like, oh. <laughs> but but I'm asking if I actually said September. No, no. Oh, you said August. I said, you August. said August. So I said as it right. you were saying the date, I was literally changing it that very instant because I was embarrassed by my mistake. Yeah, because I saw you changing it, I'm like, oh, did I say the wrong day? <laughs> In case you didn't know, it's August 23rd, 2020. Welcome to the Bear Podcast. We're September 566. We're only 100, 100 more episodes from a very scary number. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, there we go. It back. <laughs> oh, wait, we'll he says one. We'll use no growl one. for the date. What does he mean? Is he talking about Jeff's intro? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Confusion. It's Confusion. Sunday, August 31st. Oh, that. What Maybe it's that talking? growl. It's it. Oh, yeah. It's my elongating the it. It's my dick. Anyways. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> My bestie was up for a, a number of days. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, as to why, but uh, has taken to watching some YouTube channel. Um, and I can't remember what the fuck it's called. I think they're all Australian or New Zealand, but it's these three guys, three or four or five guys. And they're sort of like stand up comedians, but they make spoofs of video game trope, like characters or play moves or whatever <laughs> and so in one of them the character has to announce the name of the town or read a name read aloud the name of the characters and of course it's all the like you know character names that people make up so one of the things he has to say is he's like welcome to the town of it's my dick because <laughs> <laughs> people are assholes so <laughs> you know i just got a second monitor this weekend uh, on, on Friday. So to my left is that second monitor where I put my Skype window. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I, I got the thing. So it's really cool because when I look left, I'm looking the direction on the, the thing towards YouTube. No, you're looking towards Damon. But I, I have to look down a little because of the way it's set, so I'm kind of looking somewhere in between you two. No, no, no. In, in OBS, trust, the way it plays right now, if you look straight across, it looks like you're going to look into David's eyes. If you look under your desk, that's kind of where it looks like I am. <laughs> so. Uh, hi, Gary. Yeah, not the position I'm planning on being in. So. <laughs> I'm just saying, what is hovering over David that's blocking him? It's, what only do you mean? In, it's only on his. Don't, don't what, don't what do you mean? Just because they can't see it at home doesn't mean I couldn't see it. You had I don't know what you're talking about. Like a gray box. Uh -huh. it, it, it was, it was the Skype preview. 
<laughs> because uh, I'm, I'm clicked away from Skype, so it pops up the little thing. Oh. So apparently when it was over, it showed up as a gray box because I'm only sending your that window. So. Okay. Um, wow, all this tangent is brought to you by the fact that the three of us are getting old. Way to bring it back. <laughs> Throw that last that one. Just pull it right back. <laughs> it's it's fish it. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what happened? Something happened at David and Jim's house. Something fell over. Hopefully not Jim. <laughs> Let's hope not. Anyways. Okay. So part part of this, I'm assuming the reason why part of this topic kind of came up was the fact that uh, uh, next Saturday is my 40th birthday. Jeffrey's getting old. Jeffrey's getting old. Officially. Yeah, that's fair enough. I've grown to accept it. It's fine. Like, I got this gray in my beard. I'm probably considered a daddy cub now. It's, it, the thing has happened. It's it just happened. Like, you know, well, it, so... It, not much I can do about it. That gets us into the topic. So as you all have seen by the title of the show, whether it's video or audio or whatever, uh, it's aging cubs. Quite simply, the three of us the hosts are getting old. <laughs> There's the show. Thanks for coming. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs> Shortest hold, hold, show. <laughs> hold on, that is Nick and Ed, everybody. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Shortest show ever. <laughs> we old bitches. Like uh, <laughs> it, it's we're so old that uh, uh, the other week when when uh, Dame was reading off a. Uh, a, a ur urban dictionary uh, definition. Boy, that's an old days. <laughs> it was Urban Dictionary with Damon. There we go. Yeah, we, we forgot about that. I partially I did that so I do. could reset the, uh, the outro theme, but you know, whatever. Again, this is what happens when we get old. Uh, anyway, so, continue, <laughs> Gary. Um. So yeah, uh, Jeff is joining the forty-something club, and uh, it got me thinking about some stuff. Like, and so I will talk about my personal stuff in a moment. Um, that also kind of brought this about and ties into it. So, but you just brought up an interesting point, Jeff, when you said about being a daddy cup. So let's let's knock this out, hopefully, rather quickly. Definitions versus labels. Because we have discussed this moons ago, many moons ago, cycles of the moon. Mm -hmm. Amongst us, I want to say maybe two, three, four years ago, about the aging of us collectively and whether or not in the future the show should still be called Comes Out Loud. Because we would no longer be cubs by a number, theoretically. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the <laughs> bear podcast, indeterminate length, episode number 1,328. <laughs> My name Damn. is Jeff, and we're sorry to hear about the passing of <laughs> Co-host Gary. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How? What number episode did you say? One thousand and what? One thousand one hundred and twenty-eight. I just okay. put out a random number. <laughs> no, no, there I know. One thousand one hundred and twenty. I'm just or... gonna do the math now, bitch, because okay. you did it. One thousand one hundred and twenty-eight minus five sixty-six means there's five hundred sixty-two episodes in between. Divide by twelve means forty-six years. So double my age. <laughs> okay. So which Apparently, is a good thing. It's a I good thing. Passed. It is a good <laughs> thing, right? Wow. Because if you I... if you lived for forty six more years, that's a pretty long life. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> because because we'll just be senile by that point. <laughs> 
Oh, oh God. So 46 Party, hold, hold on. I need to change my colostomy bag. <laughs> what oh, is your hearing oh, aid? <laughs> Gary. Gary. <laughs> Damon. Da Damon. All we do is talk about gum jobs because that's what we're best at. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. And, and when when I get too old to do the show, I I would gladly pass it off to a younger generation. Yeah, I, I would just love to see this continue to like. Um, it's see you well episode one million, year thirty thirty three. We're not gonna be around for that. So, <laughs> wow, one week at a time, kids. <laughs> so i think we agreed like by conventional definition or concept we are aging out of being cubs and we have all kind of got more into like bear cubs daddy cubs or something <laughs> yeah yeah the redefining ourselves and, and trying to to let people know it's like look this whole cub thing doesn't actually have to deal with age, per se. Maybe it's just kind of a different attitude or something. Um, it know? could be attitude. Um, it could be about your uh, energy level. Mm -hmm. You know, personality. Um, yeah. So, I, I think there's... I tend to think of, like, a cub as more of a personality than a like age kind of thing um there are definitely older like cubs out there and sometimes it's even just a matter of, i hate to say it of size like <laughs> you know no, yeah we, we've we've had that too where just like just the shorter stouter you know cub type like person you know physically physically ooh, words are hard <laughs> if we don't keep they're little our age in this fucking episode <laughs> like they're words little are hard. Hard. we're not talking about dick size we're just talking about like size <laughs> we're just talking you know, like, you know, age here. Is, like, like forgetting things and everything like it's just like, crazy one of the original coasts uh, uh tim cup was uh, like, like a pocket cup i mean he was like mm -hmm. five foot mm -hmm. like i don't i don't remember the size of it, but it was been a while since I've seen him, but he's sh he's short. He's a little a little cutie, um, and he was he's definitely he's older than me. He was he was like twelve years older than me or something like that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, nowadays, you know, considering I'm sure he wouldn't have grown uh, taller or something like that. I'm sure he's. I would still consider him a cup just because it's like this. Oh, look, I'm a pocket cutie. Oh, it's a you don't know. Maybe he's into being drawn and quartered, just without the quartered part. <laughs> you know, that's got just stretched out. So. Yeah. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen him in a long time. The but... elder cubs. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen Owen's <laughs> comments in the chat. Hello, um, uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think you know we've we've kind of all agreed. Just as a bit of a rehash for folks, if you weren't aware of this in a previous conversation, that uh, we kind of ascribe it as a label that you choose it. It's a mindset thing, you know, about how you feel about stuff. Because there are some things that, you know, I, <laughs> Jeff is turning 40 this month. Damon is turning uh, uh, in October. He's only a year older than I am, so. I did not remember what year how old you're going to be. <laughs> so that's why okay. I uh, it's okay. I was like, why are we glossing over the Look, fact that I'm to, to, to be fair, I, like, to be fair, <laughs> I don't know. To be fair, I don't remember Gary's age either. So, it, it, well, you know, I'll be 46. Right. Well, I'll true. be 47. So, I'll be 47 in November. I'm quickly coming up on 5 0. Um, I say quickly because I've crossed the midpoint of the 40s. I'm now beyond 45. Mm -hmm. I'm now. The, yeah, rounding to the nearest side. 10. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So Much closer um, to 50 than either of us are. So I know, but I don't think of myself in terms of my age, yeah. which is part of the thing I want to discuss in this episode. Like, because 
I tend to think of myself as younger, like definitely younger than my age until I have moments where I, I can't do things like I used to. And then I'm like, oh, oh yeah, wait, oh. is that because I'm fat or is that because I'm old or is it because I'm fat and old? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say both. <laughs> well, right, you know, oh, and right. then there are some things that like haven't really diminished or gone away, and I am not complaining about this. This is not a, also a humble brag, but like I still have a libido, so mm -hmm. you know, um, just because you're old doesn't mean you lose libido. Maybe, maybe uh, intensity of libido. Maybe. I don't well, know. perhaps the pandemic has had an effect on people. Um, and like increase one's libido because they don't have as much opportunity. I don't know. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. In this case, uh, absence makes the dick grow longer. Uh, I wish that was the case. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that's true. Uh, stay but good. stay erect more longer. I don't know. When's... Um, it makes me thirstier more often. Mm -hmm. So there's that. You know. So yeah, um, I think in terms of like label, it's you know what you you choose for yourself. And so yes, we may be aging, we may be getting older, and uh, choosing to call ourselves a cub is you know kind of a personal choice thing. And if yeah, anybody has yeah. a problem with that, they can define themselves however they want. Also, yes. okay. I, I just realized that using a straw doesn't make the slurping sound that I was supposed to use to try, try to say uh, say sipping some tea. <laughs> Here we go. I got it. Cap off my glass, anyways. Okay. I, I I don't know. I'm just really like loopy right now for some reason. I don't know. Julie, Maybe it's the age thing. Oh <laughs> wow, seasonality. <laughs> I should put that on. Um, Wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. uh, there's an article that um I. I'm going to reference just very briefly. People can go read it. It's called Satisfying Mature Gay Sexuality. I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's from the American Society on Aging. Uh, it's a decently written, like, kind of brief article. Brief? I don't think it has. Well, <sighs> okay. Just because there's a lot of words doesn't mean it says a lot. It's Trust me. We've gotten, we've had much longer <laughs> than think the year wordier articles in the past. I, I, think it's, I think it's because of the, the, the font size compared to yes. other sites' font size, which are like twice as large. Okay, so if you scroll to the top, Jeffro, in the upper right hand corner, there are two buttons and you can change the text size. You can increase it or decrease it, because that's what you do on an older site. For people who are aging, you make text font re zoom <laughs> size plus. possible. <laughs> Well, no, right. If you know how to zoom plus, but in this case, this is this is for a site that's expecting people to not know how to do that. This what article that? kind of focuses on fifty and above, so we're not in that category. But yeah. it did give me oh, some wow. ideas. That's, that's neat accessibility. I like mm -hmm. I like accessibility. Anyways, moving on. And was entertained easily. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> David. Anyways, so for hours. There, <laughs> there's a couple of topic points that I thought would be interesting to discuss. Sure. Um, so the first one is about loneliness with aging. Two out of the three of us, two thirds of Cubs Out Loud hosts are single. Um, so this may not necessarily apply much in Damon's situation, especially during the pandemic, because his partner is pretty much always around. Um, but like. The article talks about, you know, some like study stuff and uh, not really studies, but like talks about statistics and numbers and aging. And like I said, it's about 50 and older, so it doesn't quite relate because it's but it does talk about the difference of generationally, how some came and came out older in life and they're still married to women and or have children. And that's a whole different landscape dynamic mm -hmm. than where we are because we are aging as out individuals of years of experience. Yeah. And it does talk a little bit and nicely defines about your chosen family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but even so, we're still not, um, we're not in the communities that we once were. Yeah. 
I mean, true. I mean, I think what was it? Actually, I think this topic actually brought. I was thinking about things like I remember when I was in college, and I remember things that I used to, you know, do on the regular um, so with sex. people. You know, with huh? Get sex. What? Look for sex. No. Sex. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Hush you. <laughs> Go to bars. Yeah, that's one of them. Like going out, think? like and and di- going to a bar and dancing, and like going to like like spending all night. At a at a bar, like closing down the bar, um, like maybe not necessarily drinking the whole time, but like going and just like having friends and talking and and you know listening to music and watching drag shows or getting on the dance floor and dancing like there's no tomorrow. Like that's like, I remember doing that like a lot in college did when I moved up here and I remember how fun it was. And now I'm going to be honest, like I can barely stay up till like one o'clock in the morning and that's me pushing it if ever. Like, <laughs> like I might be able to do a little bit longer, but I've probably taken a nap sometime before. <laughs> And like sometime in the day, or I've fallen asleep on the couch and woken up and just like stayed up as opposed to, you know, mm. but going out and, and spending all night, I could probably, I mean, not so much right now because, you know, pandemic, but like I could probably go if there were like a show, like a drag show, some kind of form of entertainment that I could be entertained by. For longer periods of time, but I'm definitely not dancing anymore. <laughs> the knees ain't gonna have it. <laughs> the back ain't gonna have it. <laughs> I remember back in my day where there was 18 plus nets over at the gay 90s, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and they were having a drag show. And I was also a fan of uh, uh, garbage. And one of the drag performers, uh, Roxy Marquis, uh, did number one crush the Romeo and Juliet remix from the Romeo and Juliet movie? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Nelly Hooper remix, I suppose it's actually called. Um, and uh, I got like super excited, became a huge fan of Roxy Marquis because she was doing one of my favorite bands. I was really, really happy. And I got a, uh, a, a sleeveless shirt with her name on it. Roxy boy said on it and it was like <laughs> way too tight on me but you know whatever you didn't care I was young gay and uh, much thinner than I am now <laughs> just smile and nod Carrie? As you'd say. <laughs> you're just having a nostalgia moment recalling yeah. a fond memory mm-hmm. yeah um so I, I think you know as we're as we're getting older, um, it's kind of I hate to say, it, but it's really up to us to be our own advocates for like social integration, to be involved with other people, to stay in touch, um, you know, to to know what's going on, because we can easily you know get uh, trapped in our own space in our own mind. Um, I remember when I was younger, I was very concerned about growing old and being alone Mm. because I think there was a lot of societal perspective about, you know, like that's, you know, that, um, unpleasant, lascivious gay men, like that's what happens to them, that they grow old and decrepit by themselves, you know, and, um, (laughs) just some kind of crazy, uh, you know. Like, that's just, that was the impression that I got. And so I was concerned about that. And as I've aged, I'm kind of like, mm, I'm not as concerned. Like, it's still a thing that I think about now and then. Mm, how I would yeah. like to share my life with somebody and not necessarily be single through all of that. But we also have, you know, um, a newer thing that's happening within our own community 
uh, about getting older and being gay. Mm -hmm. Um, And now I gotta look it up because I kind of mentioned it before. Um, So there's a uh, entity called Sage S A G E. And of course, it's going to take forever to load for me to be able to remember what it stands for. Um, but they do advocacy for services for LGBT elders. Um, and one of the things that they're kind of been focusing on is, you know, services as we age for being in touch with um, individuals, communities, uh, and then creating our own communities. There have been some senior uh, communities that have been created specifically for LGBTQ. Um, So that's kind of one of the things on the horizon that I think about um, in terms of that. So I think that there's that there's things, you know, that we can do. But again, it's about us doing it for ourselves that nobody's out there really um, speaking, you know, up and saying this is a thing that we need to be thinking about. Now, some of that could be due to the fact that we're able to age. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think about like the 60s and 70s, you know, we had pre and post Stonewall. We had the 70s, which some considered quite the hedonistic, you know, high point of the community in which, you know, everybody was doing everybody and everything. Um, mm-hmm. And then we got into the beginning of the 80s and then HIV AIDS came on the scene and created the epidemic that really vastly affected the community. And here we are almost 40 years later in 2020 and we've got antiretrovirals we've got all these medicines and you know measures that people aren't being taken away by you know the disease mm-hmm. so i think this is a new frontier for people to be like oh i can get older like i can not only yeah. live into my 40s but my 50s 60s 70s and so on yeah oh, yeah we're yeah, we're please. surviving longer because we have more ways to survive. Yeah. I mean, medical and health technologies have changed and shifted over the years. Um, people can generally live longer because we have a, I want to say, quote unquote, um, more qualified medical system in place. There's other things that I could go on tangents. I can go out, but I'm not going to. But I would in say general, more advanced. Yeah, advanced. Yeah, I would say advanced um, were more than qualified because uh, those people in the past were perfectly qualified. It's just they yeah. aren't as advanced as they are now. So I, I, and, I don't want to say that that my my pediatrician was not qualified at being my pediatrician when I was a kid. Well, I, there's a there's also things that you can think about. Like we 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 know more. People know more. Humans know more about things to avoid and things to maybe lower and lessen their, you know, that could potentially lessen their quality of life. We know about healthier foods. We know how to supposedly eat better. Do we always do it? No. But the whole point is that there's more access of more things out there. Um, I just made a a entire casserole which contains sausage, cheese, eggs, and and, uh, gravy and biscuits. That you'll probably eat. I've over. already eaten uh, a, a third or yeah. more. Okay. So anyway, so there's that. <laughs> and then there's the, you know, the kale chip people. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Complete opposite yeah. end of the spectrum. <laughs> so the, We got the guy you know, who survives the processed foods and, and, and things that are probably not very healthy for you. And the guy who does everything that's healthy mm-hmm. and you know we we like i said we just know better as it were and um it, it we're maintaining a, a healthy lifestyle um you know and we're live so we're so we're living longer we're taking better care of ourselves um medications are out there to better take care of yourselves um, as someone who has recently, who has been on medications for about, I want to say almost a year now for like high blood pressure and now on recently on um, cholesterol meds, like they're helping. They're hopefully, you know, knock on wood, going to sustain my life for another 
40 plus years, hopefully, you know, it's, it's, that's what they're there for. So, which, which is kind of that second point of health. Yeah. The third point. Yeah. No, where were you? We have four points. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right, Jeff. I mean, like, you know, while there is an aspect that can be, you know, lonely about aging, um, there's some there's some things on the horizon that we can be working towards, and part of it is like our own social well being, and involvement with others, and creating those communities. Um, you know, as we say, like our our chosen family, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and like Damon was mentioning, you know, part of that growing older is about our own health. Like, there was a time where um, LGBTQ health was not a quadrant of the greater public health. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, it it was just men get older, women get older. It was a very binary kind of concept. And that's as far as it went. And now we have been learning, you know, that individuals are um, a variety of ways that they express themselves. And even more importantly, how we're made up physically, um, genetically, and that that can have uh, profound effects on the future of your health. Um, You know, I think of individuals that are trans who, you know, may present themselves um, in their identity, but they will have to also be aware in the future regarding their own personal health about things that can affect them in regards to how their body exhibits things. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of that, I think, just wasn't on on the table. Like, people weren't really expressing or thinking about that. So that's, you know part of it and on top of it we don't really know if as a community do we are we different do things affect us differently Mm. um you know so like a month ago i was prescribed uh, a low dose of a hypertension blood pressure medicine and uh over the past month i've been doing a bunch of things to get myself as i like as i was explaining to my best friend who was visiting i'm trying to write the ship like i felt things kind of went sideways for a while um, and I'm owning that I'm responsible for some of the stuff, but at the same time, you know, uh, I also could use help, hence some medical visits and, um, medicine and that kind of stuff. So you find yourself now having to take medicines that you didn't have to take before when you were younger, yeah. because you may not necessarily have found that you have diabetes or hypertension, you know, blood pressure issues or cholesterol issues. Um, that type of stuff. You may also find in the near future, gentlemen, com- which is comparatively different than me, that you're going to have to do something called a colonoscopy. <laughs> it's it's something I've kind of prepared myself for, uh, at least mentally speaking. It's like eventually we're probably going to have to do look in the colon. I've already had one. Not that this is a competitive sport, but I've had just... 10. So, Ooh. shit. <laughs> or not, I guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's good shit, right? <laughs> it's forced. Um, <laughs> and I don't like, and I don't mean that, like, you know, uh, that you're forcing it. It's more um, <laughs> medically you are, mm-hmm. you are evacuating. Um, so to catch everybody up, I'm going to encapsulate this really quickly because uh, even one of my coworkers did not know anything about this. So uh, a week ago, or just this very past Wednesday, part of the reason one of my best friends came into town was because I went and had my 10th colonoscopy in 10 years. Uh, why? So we rewind back to 2010 and uh, short, simple, sweet, I had blood in my stool. Um, it appeared in the bath, you know, in the toilet. And I was like, oh, that's not normal. And I hadn't eaten beets, which tends to have that effect. You know, Mm -hmm. people get alarmed by that. So um, I went to the doctor and I wasn't sure because I had just been in the ER thinking I was having a heart attack. So I had a cardiac stress test. Yay. And uh, that was fine. And then I went and had a colonoscopy. And that's when they discovered that I had a tumor. And so I was diagnosed with colon cancer. And long story short, I had part of my large intestine removed. It's called a resection. And then afterwards, I did not have um, chemotherapy or radiation of my own choice because of the uh, several factors. And over the course of the past decade, I've had to have colonoscopies as checkups. 
Mm-hmm. And so I had one done before the surgery and then I had another two within a year afterwards and then one every year after that for a couple of years and then every three years. And then that gets us to 10 on year 10. Yay. Mm-hmm. So um, – I am an embodiment example of how it is not specific by age. Like, yes, you normally get screenings once you turn 50, but you could be any age. Um, And I did not necessarily have any factors in my family that were known. I have one family member who's had um, some polyp type stuff, but that was it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was an uh, anomaly, so to speak. So that's why when anybody talks to me about this, I am completely open and willing to have a discussion and explain about the importance of getting the screening and having it done. Uh, everyone talks about how miserable the prep is to clean yourself out or whatever, um, you know. And I'm like, eh, yeah, it's not the most pleasant thing in the world, but you know, it's it's to me, I equivalent it inappropriately with like mammograms and Pap smears. Um, mm-hmm. It's not on the same level as a prostate exam because that's relatively quick, uh, you know. But it's all about self monitoring for making sure that you know. Right. Everything's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, this past Wednesday, um, I'm happy to say that uh, my doctor informed me after the procedure, actually his fellow, his uh, student who was learning, um, she came in to let me know that there was zero abnormalities. And, Yay! Uh, no polyps or anything for the first time in all of them I've ever had done. Oh, sweet. Nice. So... Usually, uh, to explain a little bit about this to folks, when you have a colonoscopy done after you have been cleaned out, so to speak, and you're prepped from the day before, basically they anesthetize you, they put a camera up your butt, and they run it through your large intestine, and what they're looking for are these abnormalities. Typically, they're called polyps. Polyps eventually can grow and become tumors. That's why you have the exam done. And when they find a polyp, they will surgically remove it, and then they'll send it away to have an exam to see what the story is with it. Um... And that's pretty much the way it's always been. So, like, in the very beginning, I had a tumor, had that removed. And then ever since then, I've always had, like, some uh, adenoma, like, you know, some abnormality stuff. Even three years ago, my last one, there was some small polyps they removed. But this time, I got a clean bill of health. Yay! So, I'm actually kind of excited about that because I was like, wow. Like, I was just used to the whole, like, oh, we found one or two. Like, you know. Um and this time the doctor was like, or the fellow was like, yeah, there was nothing. And I was like, really? Oh, nothing? <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was nice to to get the, the check mark, so to speak, um, in regards to that. So that was enjoyable and pleasant. But it's one of those things that I've become accustomed to and having to do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, but it will be something that comes in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. A week Prior to having my colonoscopy, I had a cardiac stress test Mm -hmm. because with age and some weight gain recently over the past couple of years, Mm -hmm. um, there was, I just felt like there was things not usual, not normal. Um, So since the end of last year through the first half of this year, I felt like, like maybe I had had a cardiac event. I wasn't really sure. So I finally was able to get a stress test done and they said that it ultimately they couldn't find anything. Um, but if, you know, I do have any pain or anything to, you know, let them know and they'll, uh, get me, you know, a more thorough exam, so to speak. It's better to check and there not be anything than to not mm-hmm. check and there be something. So, yeah, right. Someone who has um, with heart related things that's, I had a echocardiogram done, um, a few months ago for that very reason. Like checking everything, is everything okay? Are you sure? Okay, then we'll, we're good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, to their knowledge, there there was not necessarily a cardiac event. There, they couldn't see any damage. Um, so, who knows what you know it had been? But in all of that being said, uh, I also got to have a pulse oximetry overnight test done, where they uh, put uh, that like ET glowing red thing on your finger. And with a machine, and it measures your oxygen level in your blood. And that led to, I got approved for a two-night sleep study that I got to do at home. So I got to wear this little device that kind of looks like a big beeper, for those of you who remember what those were, uh, on a canvas, like, kind of uh, halter monitor kind of deal. Um, It's not very big, but it has a tube 
that is what's called a nasal cannula. So it goes to your nose to measure and injure your oxygen that way. And also the pulse oxygen you wear for two nights and you send it away and then you get a result and all that. Um, come to find out, I officially have sleep apnea. <laughs> so you're a true bear. I know. How crazy <laughs> is that? Like I, if I'm playing bingo, I got another square on the card. Finally. <laughs> Here I thought I'd pretty much had gotten it all, you know, an all square or all cover. Uh, I mean, all joking kind of aside, bad, kind of a bad thing, but, you know, you know it's, well, actually, it's been very stereotypical. Quite a lot of people um, have apnea, but they don't know it mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in their sleep. And it isn't specifically always tied to weight. Like there are people who are smaller framed um, and not with a high BMI or overweight for that matter that can develop sleep apnea because it's mostly about when you're breathing in your sleep whether or not your airflow is continuous and not blocked. And so anybody that snores, that's basically why you're snoring is because your air path is blocked. And basically your body is forcing air in and or out to make you breathe. Hence apnea. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I got diagnosed with that. And uh, so a over a month ago, this thing over here that I'm kind of pointing to for those of that are watching the YouTube uh, video, this big old honking thing here on the floor is called an oxygen concentrator. Isn't that fun? So basically it takes the air in the room and it uh, concentrates the oxygen and then it delivers it via uh, tubing. And so for the past month I've been doing oxygen uh, at night when I sleep. Yay. Uh, because my O2 level had dropped below 90 a couple of times, according to the sleep study. So that's alarming because for our body to regulate itself, like brain function and all that kind of stuff, you should really be like, mm, I'm not an expert on this, but I think you really should be like 93 to 95 and above on what we call on room air. So I was expecting, cause this thing came into my life that I was going to get a CPAP, um, and you could combine the two of them together, but it's not a, a necessity. Usually the CPAP or BiPAP will assist you with the breathing and that helps you with getting your oxygen. So yeah, I finally, after switching PCPs and getting everything set up, now I have a CPAP. So like many in the bear community, I now have a machine that I get to take with me when I go to sleep someplace. Yay. <laughs> so uh i got to pick it up yesterday um hence you guys probably already knew about it because i took a picture and posted it online and was like oh like does this does this make me official now like you know because i have a mask and all that jazz um i was pleasantly surprised by the number of people that reached out and commented <laughs> or said things to me um did you did you get a bunch of congrats from your bear friends um, I don't know if I would say congrats, but uh, a lot of people were very much like affirmative to the positive. Like, this will be beneficial. Um, notably, the one thing I did take away is a number of people said, give it a couple of weeks, like to get used to it. Like, um, and you may find that it will uh, vastly change not only your sleep, but how you feel during the day. Mm -hmm. um, that you will, you know, feel, you will feel like you get better rest. And you will feel more awake during the day, so you will not necessarily yeah. feel like you're just going to fall asleep at any moment or be tired yeah. as much. I've, I've heard that for sure, and, and that's, I've heard that's one of the benefits. We'll see how it goes. That's because I, you get better sleep. The, the quality yeah. of sleep uh, becomes a lot better when, when you can well, breathe during the yeah. night. So. Talk about how that happens. Oh my god, I can breathe while I'm sleeping. Like, oh. oh, I know. I mean, technically, <laughs> breathe better, but you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And uh, so, one of the things I realized for my personal health that had happened over the past couple of years, I definitely think the apnea thing got serious in the past year because I, like, since the end of last year, first part of this year had put on about 20, 30 pounds mm -hmm. and I own it. Like I have a sedentary lifestyle. I sit a lot. Like I don't really, you know, exercise. I don't eat the best. Um, I eat more calories than I'm expending. I get all of that. But looking back on it, I was like, Oh, but yeah, I was feeling tired. 
So I was doing a lot of like caffeinated things, sugary things, mm-hmm. like stuff to give me some kind of energy. And that just compounds because I'm not really, you know, burning the calories on that. So I'm just basically, you know, preparing for the ultimate hibernation of some kind, apparently. Um, so that's been a whole factor in looking at it. I'm like, okay, so now I've got this, you know, this other aspect of what it is for my health. But um, my whole point in, in using myself as an example is these are some of the things that we may find that come into our lives in the future. And we are really our own best advocate. And while we may choose to avoid things because we don't want to face the reality of getting older or aging or not being as healthy, um, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't benefit us. <laughs> like yeah. like psychologically, emotionally, we might feel a little better because we're not dealing with the potential truth. But the reality is that'll bite us in the ass really badly. Mm-hmm. True, 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 true. Like, take care of yourselves. I know that sounds and it sound and go to a doctor if you can, if you absolutely can, because it is. It's scary to think about the could be's, but yeah. it is rewarding to know the preventables. You know, Gary, you're doing, you now have sleep app. You know you have sleep apnea, so you now have a mask that you can wear that will help you while you sleep. You know, it's not going to remove it per se, but it is going to help you. And you know, like people have been saying, give it a couple of weeks and you'll suddenly feel the difference. I've, I've heard that so many times. Like, you'll feel better because you have slept better. Right. Um, you know, taking medication. Jim, I was talking about earlier, um, he went to the doctor recently for the first time in a while because he we're now he's now on my insurance. And for the most part, believe it or not, He's fine. You know, cholesterol's in. (laughs) Why does that feel like a yes, dear kind of moment? (laughs) It was. Uh, You know, but like, you know, some, you know, some things he'll have to pay attention to, you know, but he now knows, you know, for the most part, he's okay. So, you know, things that you'll have to be able to take care of and we'll, you know, monitor ourselves. And I mean, clearly both of us need to lose weight. Like that's just kind of the thing it is. That's just the way it is. We're bigger bears and we live, like you said, we live sedentary lives. So (laughs) it's it's a thing. So, but yeah, you know, it, it's, I mean, I mean, I know we're in the United States, so overall healthcare kind of sucks, but um, if you can, you know, try to do something because it will help you in the time. And, you know, as we're talking about aging, like, you know, it's again, it's better to know than to not know. And suddenly the worst case scenario happens. It puts a little not less stress that, on you too, to, to yeah. know, hey, you're fine. Yeah. You know, and not just your physical health. In some ways, I'll hit the, I'm going to bring this up, but like mental health is important too. Mm, that's true. So, yeah. So, you know, things to think about as well. Um, I come from a background where mental health wasn't really um, talked about, discussed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's not something that people, you know, brought up. You know, I was, it's also, hate to say like church and religion was very much like oh you can just you know pray on it and you'll be fine like no pray the insanity no. away <laughs> no you don't have to be <laughs> depressed with the love of jesus sorry literally word for word um <laughs> are you saying that god didn't take away your diabetes no oh okay oh, or my depression <laughs> <laughs> or my anxiety yeah <laughs> just saying like so and it is you know 
something to consider, you know, to think about, you know, mm -hmm. and try to get help if you can. Because, again, it is good to know than to not know. And I know I keep harping on that, but that's kind of a big thing for me. It's good to better to know than to not know, mm -hmm. and have something happen. Too true. But you know we're old. <laughs> so old. Listen to your elders, children. <laughs> Speaking of listening to older people. Our uh -huh. final, final kind of bullet, at least for this episode, is about ageism. So we've talked a little bit. Kind of what I was trying to segue to. <laughs> yeah, nice job, y'all. Y'all did good with that. Um, so, like we've kind of talked about this in the past. I know for me specifically, I am not a person that really ever like poo pooed older people in my community. Mm -hmm. um, probably because I grew up as the an only child, the oldest of grandkids on both sides of the family, so I was always surrounded by adults. Um, so to me, it was nothing to be around older people, always has been. Like, it doesn't phase me in the least bit. Um, not everybody's that way, and we know within our own LGBTQ, you know, broader category grouping, uh, that it can seem and or feel uh, be exhibited that, you know, younger generation and or younger in age seem to, you know, Create, uh, create uh, moments where you know they're not really interested in older people or their stories or being around them or making opportunities for them. Um, so I think you know there is ageism, but I don't necessarily see that a whole lot in the bear community. I mean, there is some, and part of it I think is not so much about the bear community. I think it's just people are uncomfortable. So when an individual is older and they have like needs for assistance with getting around, so they may need like an, a device, like a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, something of that sort. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's different. It may make you feel uncomfortable. You're not really sure how to be around that person. And now that I think about it, like you could be younger with an assistant device. Um, mm -hmm. And still others might feel kind of out of sorts because they don't know like um, and they may not be thinking about that. Like when you invite an individual to a place to an event, you know, is it accessible? Would they, you know, be comfortable in that location, that kind of stuff? So I think, you know, in terms of, of age and that um, that's one aspect of it, you know, as to being accountable to the recognition that people have different needs mm -hmm. um, as they age. Uh, you know, like if you're going to host at a venue, it would be kind of presumed by most individuals that it should have bathrooms, but is it just like a rest area kind of thing with a trough? Does it even have a toilet? If it has a toilet with a stall, is it accessible? Does it have grab bars? Like, Does it have a glory hole? If that's important to some people. <laughs> uh, I mean, accessibility, be. but that's I suppose, another matter. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean i i mean because i've outright seen it within our own community like at an event at a bar you know or whatever or even out in public you know um where you i get it we tend to congregate in our collective groups um mm -hmm. you know by age by identity by um in common interest so you know puppies leather folk drag you know what I mean? Um, gay individuals, gay, lesbian, you know, bi, trans, you know, queer who are, you know, deaf. Um, you know, like I've seen all these like pocket populations. So I get that we congregate together, but I've also seen even within them or at the same level, like, I don't want to call it disrespect, but disinterest, I guess, mm -hmm. in individuals that are, you know, not of the same age. But I don't know how much that's true. Like, yeah. It's difficult because being <laughs> the age that I am and seeing what I do, like, I I don't know if we're coming into the age of daddiness. <laughs> I mean, I kind of phrase it that way because I think, you know, we're, we collectively as a community are growing into our age. You know, we're able to age. That's the first piece. And then second of all, like, what does that mean? And with the crossover into the leather BDSM kink community, daddy has a different connotation in some circles. Um, so 
you know, if you have a daddy, you know, uh, what is that dynamic in that relationship like? And what does that mean? And how does that, you know, uh, work in terms of like, you know, others recognizing it. So I think it's, I, I don't think there's a simple presentation in regards to ageism, mm -hmm. but there's yeah. some things out there. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the older gentlemen in my life when I was coming out as a baby gay in while I was in college. Cause like, and although I tend, I personally tend to be attracted to older people in general, mostly because I, I've always considered myself a little bit more mature. That may not necessarily be the case, but that's one of the things I think about. Um, but I appreciated it, it a lot more because they're the ones that showed me the ropes. Um, I recall a slightly funny story, but not really. Um, where I caught my first STI, um, and and not knowing how to deal with it, but having like I had a friend who didn't live too far away from when I was in college, and I called him and talked to him about it. Actually, he had long story short, he had mentioned that there's it. He had had it before. This is this is crabs. Just so everyone, just to kind of get everything away <laughs> out of the way. Um, it wasn't anything major, but it was it was crabs, and um, he apparently had, had caught it from someone else, and he had done all the clean and everything, or at least he thought he did. But he had mentioned after we had you know met and we had played together that um, he found another one, like just randomly. So he said, there's a possibility, just to let you know, if you call, you know, get one, or if you find something, let me know. And I did. Huh. So um, he picked me up, and we went to local, like, Walmart or something like that. And no, we went, went to his place, picked some stuff up, got all, if you, you know crabs, you know how it goes, got all the things to get it out of the way. And then, you know, he washed my clothes. We sat and talked and and then he took me back home. And I like that was just like knowledge that I didn't know before. And I knew he knew exactly what to do. And he was able to call me to fuck down because obviously I was freaking out. Um, um and then we went back to my dorm and stripped the sheets and cleaned them all and did all of that too because it was that was sort of the whole point you know mm -hmm. right. so it was it was good to have that moment and I don't know if I would have had that with someone my own age maybe if they had had a similar experience possibly mm -hmm. but I had the experience of someone who has already been there and done that and knew exactly what to do to kind of get me through it without, you know, doing things calmly and rationally because they have experienced it beforehand. Right. Right. Um, just as a, a, the only thing I want to say in response to that, David, was uh, for those of you that are not familiar with crabs, <laughs> uh, because you have been blessed and or lucky, however you want to phrase it, um, mm -hmm. to have not come into contact with them. Uh, crabs are also known as pubic lace, so basically they are uh, a traveling... Uh, what are they? Are, are they considered an insect? I don't think so. I think it's a parasite. Um, I don't know. No, it's something. Um, Why? It's a parasitic crabs. insect. Parasitic, parasitic insect? Parasitic yeah. insect. Mm-hmm. That feeds on human blood. They are insecta class of the kingdom Animalia. So there you go. Um, so basically, uh, they live on the skin. They attach themselves to hair follicles and then um, uh, cause itchiness and all sorts of different things. Feed off of our blood. So uh, not the same thing as bed bugs, but related mm -hmm. in theory. Um, so there's products you can get over the counter to help with it. There will be things called combs. There's a whole bunch of procedures you need to go through. What most people find uh, to be effective is to shave themselves. Mm -hmm. um, 
I can attest to this in my younger years. I uh, have had more than one occurrence, and that is not that uh, that I intentionally sought them out. It was just who I had played with, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which most people probably could say that. Um, yeah, but there is a bit of a panic factor when you realize, you know, that you have acquired them because you know you have to not only clean yourself, but then, as you were saying, you know, you should take the proper precautions with the clothes that you've been wearing and the at least the bed sheets and linens and that kind of stuff, and make sure that it all gets washed and thoroughly like hot dried and all that to kill it off. Mm. So um, there's plenty of information you could probably find online about treatment methods and things to do. So. Um, but I didn't just didn't want to gloss it over service. and make a yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I didn't want to make a presumption that everybody out there is familiar with them and knows True. what to do. True. Um because uh, to me it's one of those things that people don't talk about. Like I don't know how many people I mean, it's not a badge of courage that people wear and be like, I've had pubic lace, you know. Uh, <laughs> ha 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 look at me. Right, but I I find that, you know, when people are open enough to talk about it, they're kind of like, yeah, I had crabs once or whatever, Um, you know, which my whole thing is once is enough. Like, and (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) so I'm like, we, you know, you don't need them again. Like, I would, I would be fine if they was eradicated. That'd be nice. Mm Kind of like, you know, in my opinion, bed bugs that, you know, if we could just get rid of them. That'd be nice too. Just be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, just, but what I kind of what I was getting at, just like that, you know, the the experiences that some of our elders have had, right? Um, you know, some of us can have appreciated, you know, that knowledge and that and that education of those experiences and share, them sharing their stories and what have you. Like you were talking particularly about the. Um, leather kink community <sighs> sometimes you know kind of preface with the sometimes because mm. um elders are 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 revered for their experience and knowledge and education uh, because of um just the length of time that they've been in the community and you know they know things and they're respected in some ways. Um, that trend is changing in some ways, just because um, sometimes that education is a little biased and um, insert like blank phobic here, <laughs> um, um, mm-hmm. can be in some ways. So the, the you know, that has been changing, but that was for a long time. And there was talk about how the, you know, HIV age epidemic took a lot of those elders away um, because we were, you know, they lost, they were succumbed to, you know, the illness. But um, on, on the other side of that, there are some still around. There are still people that are, are respected and revered for the good reasons and have also learned and grew as the community has changed in the past, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and our, you know, the hope is at least in that, in those communities that they're, they are also learning while they're also teaching, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of, uh mentors you baby gays they <laughs> respect your elders and enjoy their company whether it's in bed or out of bed true if you ha- because you never know when you may have questions Do you um, have answers or it will help you find it yeah I mean one of the things that I know um, I used to say especially when I was more active in the bear community for younger guys that were coming in and they were like older members. Um, if I ever was around and I found that like the younger guys were like making comments or kind of being inappropriate, you know, and, and mm-hmm. um, either disparaging or something, I would usually at some point kind of drop the street bomb and be like, just be aware, sweethearts, you too one day will be that age. Mm-hmm. So like if, 
like you're not interested in an older guy that's hitting on you, that's fine. You don't have to make a big production about it. You know, you don't have to be an asshole about it. The fact that they're older, um, you know, and that you're not interested. Mm-hmm. However, you could be missing on a, a very nice experience and an opportunity because with age comes uh, experience, skills. skill. There skills. you go, skills. skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, patience, understanding, mm-hmm. wisdom. Um, wait, wait, wait! You haven't had much experience, Father. Mean? Don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Um, passion, perhaps, mm-hmm. um, you know, perhaps a caring concern, you know, there, there are things to be experienced that you may have not necessarily found, um, with others. And don't get me wrong. Like, you know, when I was at half my age, you know, seven minutes of heaven was, was fine. Uh, you know, but I usually found that I appreciated more, mm-hmm. um, in in the time spent and the experience so now if it's come into that you know i'm an older individual and i could perhaps be with someone of my age or older if that means cuddling if it means you know uh you know snuggles and and hugs and lots of touching and kissing you know which most people would probably kind of put into the foreplay category that's okay Mm -hmm. um you know so i i think that there's there can be much uh in terms of like gained rewards through that mm-hmm. to, to consider so yeah i yeah like all of that like one of the things i always used to tell myself was like you said like that's going to be you you're going to be older someday like i'm not saying like throw a bone like don't 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 pity them but like you never know right you you you, you don't know what you're losing by dismissing someone just because of their their age, yeah. Um, I've tried to kind of live that experience, especially with um, youngers, 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 youngins, <laughs> the baby gay youngins. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, sometimes it's it it can be a little grating. I will admit. Um, I was actually talking to some nineteen year old earlier today on. Scruff of all places, which I was like, what, what the fuck? Anyway, but like, <laughs> just they, 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 their approach was a little like red flaggy for me. So they kind of got, you know, I, I put a hand out and like, <laughs> like, kind of held them, held them at at arm's length, as it were, and um. But I did keep the conversation going and right. eventually determined, like, no, we're not going to really be compatible because, yeah, there's some things, other things going on with him. That, right. Hmm. But, yeah. Um, we, we, I appreciate you're attracted, attracted to me. But, no. No. Um, but it was funny. <laughs> Actually, I messaged you, Gary. Um, the one, um, Joshua Parker, um, like me mm-hmm. finding out that he is younger than me, mind. <laughs> so for those of you that aren't putting together what that means, Damon has been semi-celebrity drooling over this gentleman who we thought was older, like more like to my age and come to find out he's actually younger and now Damon doesn't mm-hmm. know what to do with himself because he's been having these <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Like, you know he's been having these daddy no, fantasies I'm attracted and to come daddy to find out he's actually younger. older or you know Damon's older than him it means nothing yeah. um I'm, I'm fine now but it was just like oh shit like oh oh you I could still have you. sex with him and call him oh, daddy i don't, don't think it's that big it. of a deal i will be fine like, 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 don't get no, no, I'm saying you could probably <laughs> still go to Pound Town and call him daddy, even though he's younger. Ain't that big a deal? Yeah, I'm good. Like that dick, oh yeah. 
yeah, I'm fine. It just was. It just like I said, it just caught me by surprise. And because and it's funny because the reason it caught me by surprise was he was there was a meme on Twitter about posting the Playgirl magazine from the year like your your the month you were born, uh-huh. and and his he it was a I think a picture of Richard Gear, and I was just like. That doesn't add up <laughs> in my head. Math. Because I looked Weird. mine up and I and I will admit I didn't know who the fuck this person was. So <laughs> I was like, well, then like his would technically be someone else I didn't necessarily know, possibly, you know, depending on, you know, how old he was and whatever, whoever it was. But yeah, I looked it up and I looked him up on um, IMDb to kind of figure out, like, so when, what is, what is the year that he was born? And yeah, it was, I think, 82 or 83. He's younger than me. No, yeah. much, but he's younger than me. It's not, not much younger than you either. 83. Yeah. 83. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're younger than it me was... before you shoot. That's not, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's just, but, that's not like super shocking if he was like 30 or something like that. But maybe it'd be like, ooh. Hello, everyone. This is him. Is that your cutie patootie? Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think it was starting to go gray. Let's put that out there. Gray in the beard about that time. So yeah, it's fine. Let's get a patootie to let jump out. Okay. I can just go. I need a mop. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. As as we're about to wrap up, just as a complete, like, sort of non sequitur, but, mm-hmm. like, going off of that, I'm not sure how I feel about looking up the Playgirl cover of the month and year of my birth because I found it on a website called the Internet Antique Shop. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just say it for the record. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Yeah, mine was... Um, it's It has Catherine Ross and Sam Elliott. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said. You know, I, I have Chevy Chase and Jane Seymour. So I know who the hell they are. Yeah. I have Don Stroud. Don't That's what know. I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Roll in the same boat. <laughs> he was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm like looking over his Wikipedia page because I'm like, I don't know who the hell this is. Uh, he appeared in, with Clint Eastwood in two films back in the late 60s, early 70s. This is probably why I can't relate because he's, I mean, he's before my time in a bunch of ways. He was on the original Hawaii Five-0. Yeah. Mm. Oh, had a supporting role in the Amityville Horror. Mm. I'm trying to see why Chevy Chase and Jane Seymour were, were on to cover that. I can't figure out. Well, if you... Sometimes if you look at the title or the cover, you might get an idea. I, I oh, and he was at the cover. He was in Babylon Five. I mean. Oh, he was in <laughs> Django Unchained. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Quantum Leap. He's I been a bunch of stuff. Here. Just don't know who he is. <laughs> what every woman must know about the presidential candidates before it's too late. Hmm. <laughs> was see, I was born in 1980, so there was no, it was an election year. Ah, it was when Ronald Reagan was let in, in as president for the first time. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, where were we? There's that. I think that's pretty yeah. much it for this episode. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Let us know about our uh, weird tangents that we've had various places throughout this, this episode. Uh, you can send all those comments over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Put that on speed dial on your phone. Find us various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Online, the appropriate place of the URL. You can uh, also join our Entourage chat where you'll see pictures of, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, how, do you, how do you put it? Today is brought to you by Final Fantasy 16 mm-hmm. characters and suggestive poses, two of which are really <laughs> attractive for me. Last one? Oh boy. Anyways. Uh, you can find all that over at tellyourl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're planning to record all these, such as the power hour we're doing next Saturday, right? That's right. We're going to do it on Saturday. My birthday? My birthday? Huh? Huh? We'll talk about it later. Uh, you can find all yeah. those at <laughs> tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. Uh, if you would like merchandise such as... A V3 t-shirt such as what Gary is wearing or what I'm wearing as a sleeveless shirt. Um, you get various different styles. It's got different options. You can choose whatever you want. Let's go for it. Uh, you can find all of that at uh, Zazzle slash Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> I did not say dot com because for all you Canadian people, it would be dot CA. For all you UK people, it would be dot co dot UK. For all you Australian people, yada yada. You get the point. Um, so go to the appropriate place. Uh, you can also become a patron. Um, you go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you'd like to, uh, send us just a one-time donation, just cuz, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, I know these times are, are tough, so if you can't give us money, we understand. It's fine. But if things change, mm-hmm. we appreciate it very much, and maybe we can... Improve uh, process and equipment and all that stuff. Um, you can also subscribe to us through Apple Podcast uh, or uh, uh, over at Google Play Podcast, which actually is closing down. I think it's going to YouTube Music or something like that. It's sticking around. It's just different location or something because Google's weird that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, over on Spotify uh, in various other places. Um, and uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box up, box puppy, box cup, box up, see or other. You can find me on Sundays for Bears and Dragons over at twitch.tv slash windgem. That's W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. Um, and uh, see my players. Um, have a lot of shit hit the fan uh, <laughs> during things. Kind of unexpected. Keeps me on my toes. And me giving away magical items because I'm dungeon mastery. All using Rule 20 uh, on Sundays. Uh, before the show, or maybe after the show. It depends on when we record this. Uh, Damon? Wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as DeaterCub79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Definitely really- not safe for work. Sorry. Not not safe for work. Uh, no, no, ma'am. Unless you're working from home, then it might not matter as much. Mm. Just not on your work computer. On, as I say, be on your own device, not your work. work. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel seventy three. Um, I want to make a cor- a horrible correction for the record. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. I did not realize all this time I've been rattling that off. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, and it is not the porn account, and it is not the drag account, I don't have the handle Gerber73. Oh. Somebody else has it and hasn't used it since 2013. Oh. I don't know who this dude is, because he has just like two or three posts, but he doesn't he doesn't post it. So I forgot that my regular, semi-political, like, everyday kind of Twitter is uh, G.N. Snyder. So, Ah, there's that. Now you know. Yeah. Uh, 
I just, for some reason, like, I just log in and I kind of switch between the profiles and I didn't really, you know, think anything about it. And for some reason this week, I caught it and I was like, wait, like, oh, I know what it was. I was trying to share something from my porn profile to my other one. And I was typing in to direct message it from one account to the other to myself. And I put in, like, to put in as at GareBear73 in the search. And the image that came up didn't match. It wasn't my headshot. And I was like, what in the... So that I had to, like, go do a search and put the pieces together and figure out and be like, oh, that's not me. Whoops. Whoopsie. Sorry. So, yeah. There's that. All right. Hey, with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.